došli v mesto knjižnico Ljubljana, ob odprtju tedna nizozemske kulture. Še en teden nas čaka, ko bomo spoznavali svet med nami, ki je malce drugačen, pa vendar le svet, ki se odpira skozi umetnost, skozi literaturo, skozi vse tisto lepo, kar ima Evropa, tudi zaradi nizozemske. Raj še bi umrl od strasti kot od dolgočasja, je rekel Vincent Van Gogh in mislim, da se boste strinjali z njim, glede na to, kaj nas vse čaka v tem tednu. Je pa res, da, ko sem pripravljala ta lovod, sem se resno spraševala, pravzaprav, kaj izpostaviti. Nizozemska je toliko vsega, ne začeti z ravnicami, na katerih se dneje omljeni na veter in piha stanen veter, ne začnem z gavdo, z edamcem, Naj začnem s coklami, naj besede oblečem v cokle. Kaj pravzaprav? In zato smo še posebej veseli, da boste lahko v tem tednu izbirali in izbrali vse tisto, kar je nizozemsko strastnega. In predvsem smo posebej veseli, da lahko ob večeru odprtja med nami predstavimo in pozdravimo in ne še to tudi slišali ga bomo v pogovoru, njegovo ekselenco, veleposlanika Vsega, Kraljevine Nizozemske v Sloveniji, njegove ekscelenco Marka Hemisa. Dobro večer. S to milozvočno skladbo in glasbo nas bo spremljal Boris Šinigoj. Kasneje je šel v večeru, za enkrat nas je samo upeljal v ta večer. Z gospodom oziroma z njegove ekscelenco se bo pokovarila Ksenija Hrovat. Zdaj pa večeru v pozdrav, v ljudno vabim besedi, direktorico knjižnice, mestne knjižnice Ljubljana, magistrico Tejo Zorko. Lepo prosim. Hvala. 
Hvala lijepa za besedo. Prav prisrčen pozdrav tudi z moje strani. Spoštovani obiskovalci, cenjeni gostje, odveste, svet med nami je tak prisrčen decembrski dogodek, se ga vsi prav prisrčno in veselimo in s tem projektom, ki je obsežen, cikličen sklop prireditev, ki ga zanaša uporabnike in prebivalce mesta Ljubljana pripravljamo že vrsto let, nekako uvedemo v veseli praznični decembr. V okviru tega projekta Svet med nami seveda vsako leto pripravljamo predstavitveni teden kulture izbrane države. V preteklih letih ste lahko pri nas okusili že delček starodavne kulture, dediščine, Grčije, zibarske, evropske civilizacije. Vse ste znanili z egzotično kulturo japonske, kitajske, uživali v literaturi glasbi plesu Španije in spoznavali slikovito kulturo starodavne Indije. Spoznavali smo kozmopolitsko Francijo, sledila je zrena Irska in lani še naša prvita soseda Italija. S tem našim tednom različnih dogodkov, kar 49 se jih bo zvrstilo v tej knjižnici in tudi v drugih knjižnicah v naši mreži, pa seveda želimo zbliževati ljudi različnih narodnosti, spoznavati bogatstvo različnih kultur, širiti obzorja in iskati lepoto drugačnosti. Včasih je potrebno pokazati tudi to, kako majhne so razlike med nami in opozoriti na prv posebna bogatstva, vrednote in dosežke, ki so doma v nekem lokalnem okolju vrednost pa nosijo prav vsem nam. Ta poseben teden, ki ga odpiramo danes, je posvečen tudi eni prav zelo posebni državi, nizozemski. To je dežela, ki je znana po harmoničnosti in spoštovanju do narave, do zemlje, ki jo njeni marljivi prebivalci marsikje pet za pedjo dobesedno izstaže v morju, pa tudi po rožah, po urejenosti. Morda je malo manj znano dejstvo, da je nizozemska ena izmed največjih pridelovalk k hrane v Evropi. To je dežela, ki je znana po odprtosti duha, svobodomiselnosti, toleranci, S temi značivnostmi pa predstavlja nekakšen prostor idej in podjetnosti in je izjemno uspešna na področju arhitekture, mode, oblikovanja, seveda pa že tradicionalne umetnosti, v sodobnem času pa tudi ekološke osveščenosti in težen v trajnost povezanja. Takor so lepo zapisali v naši programski knjižici tedna svet pred nami, je nizozemska prostor posebne kulturne identitete, v kateri se tesno povezuje ta bogata tradicija in najbolj progresivne ideje sodobnosti. Pri izvedbi našega projekta seveda sodelujemo z prvi vrsti s cenjenjem veleposlaništvom Pelevine Nizozemske tu pri nas v Ljubljani. Zahvaljujemo se za to odlično skupno delo in tako upamo, vodi to delo tudi v bojstransko spoznavanje in tkanje trdnejših vezi in daljših sodelovanj tudi v bodoče. Ob enem pa smo se povezali tudi s številnimi zunanjimi ustvarjalci, javnimi zavodi, posamezniki. Zanimajo nas ljudje, ki živijo tu v Sloveniji, pa niso slovenci, ki so si tukaj ustvarili in svojo novo domovino. V raznovrstnem programu za otroke in za odrasle Spoznavamo kulturo, teko stojoče držele, seveda s predavanjimi literarnimi dogodki, filmskimi projekcijami in tako naprej. Tako pod taktiko našega vodja prireditvene dejavnosti Marka Lankoviča nastajajo res vsebinsko bogati dogodki, nekoceni prispevki v ponubi naših knjižnic. Vsem nam želim, da bi ta prvi decembrski teden, ki je pred nami, zazvenil v sozvočju dveh kultur nizozemske in slovenske in nam stkal čim več skupnih vezi. Vsem, ki ste se pri tokratnem tednu nizozemske kulture, ki ste sodelovali pri njem, se presrčno zahvaljujem za trud, našim cenjenim gostom in vsem našim opiskovalcem prireditev, pa želim tedni lepih in poučnih doživetij. Nizozemska, dobrodošla med nami. Hvala.
se to ni zelo. Ribica zaveda, da je morje nevarno in nevihta strašna, ampak mu te nevarnosti nikoli niso bile razlog, da bi ostal na obali. Tudi to ne bi bila misel Vincenta van Goga. In verjetno je potrovala prav drznost nizozemcev, da so šli pogosto na morje in da so prinašali in se upenjali tako v širši kot oži svet, tako v Evrope kot širnega sveta. V veseli mi je, da lahko k besedi povabim vele poslanika kraljevine in izozemske Sloveniji in vabe ekselenco Marka Henisa. Zasteži si vrš spres. Hvala vse. In ja bom to v engleš. Zdaj bom to vse 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 I'm happy to see at least okay. a lot of hands. No, thank you very much for coming. And thank you very much for organizing this event because this is a gift to us. And I'm happy not only to see you, the director, but also the previous director who invented this week of culture. And this is really a nice way to treat a country. Um, I won't say much because I will be interviewed by Xenia in a couple of minutes, and she will go in depth, uh, I think. But I just wanted to uh, thank very much um, uh, Marco, another Marco, Alakovic, for all his endeavors, and um, writing also a very nice brochure with a lot of very positive undertones about my country. And I tell you what, I immediately believe them, but normally I'm slightly more humble, because I do not always think that my country is the greatest country. I mean, we normally say, I mean, uh, America first, but the Netherlands second. <laughs> um, but I tell you, it's, uh, it's an honor just to represent a country which is depicted in this small booklet with all these initiatives, with all the fantastic, um, and I'm happy to see uh, Anita Zibrik here and other professors who will dedicate their time to so many different topics. Thank you very much. I leave it to this, because there is one thing I hate, and that is talking heads. <laughs> and we are all the time sitting and talking to other people. But later on, Xenia, I'm really looking forward to your interview. And I already could uh, see some of the uh, questions, so I could prepare myself. <laughs> thank you very much. But once again, thank you very much for the initiative and all your work. And I have to thank uh, Petra Yesinovic from my embassy, who did a lot of work, and uh, Michelle. And, uh, and I also see uh, uh, my uh, uh, big friend, Francie Gill, who helped also in bringing, well, you did it yourself, nice posters. But uh, also my staff was involved. But we loved to work together uh, with you. Thank you very much. Seveda ni slučaj, da imamo danes med nami nekoga, ki zelo dobro ne ga igra lutnjo, pač pa jo tudi pozna, Boris Šinigoj. Prej so se pogovarjala, pa ste rekli, danes imam posebno lutnjo s seboj, pa to je moje prvo vprašanje, o čem posebno in predvsem, na kakšen način je povezano z nizozemsko. Ker vemo, ne, oziroma vemo, To bi nas bilo izhajalo iz Perzije, oziroma naj bi izhajalo iz Perzije. Danes pa govorimo o nizozemski, pa me zanima ta povezava. Prosim. Hvala lepa. Torej, Lutna morda res izbira iz Perzije, pa to že kar nekaj stoleti nazaj. Pri Goravcev pride v Evropo, in sicer v Lima, Španijo, na Sicilijo. Rabsko ime za Lutna je na Lut, čeprej nečemo čas, kot bomo pisali Lutna v vseh evropskih jezikih. Ljudnja, ki pa danes igram, je pravzaprav prot toga letnega razvoja. Sprejo so to po svojem orientarski ljudnja primeli s prečkami, zato da se lahko na njej izvajalo več glasje. Potem pa so dodajali pare strun in najprej nastala nesančna ljudnja, potem iz njej se razvila baročna ljudnja. Ljudnja, ki je držil v naročju nekje med nesansom in barokom. Zanimivo je pa zato, ker se je pač ohranila v največji meri zgolj na v slikarskih upodobitvah in sicer nizozemske zlate dobe. Recimo na slikah kot je recimo Hendrik Martinson z Sorg ali pa Van Jeris in podobni slikari so to podabljali. Medtem, ko drugo podrobi, 
ne poznamo tako zelo redko častoh bogate verikote ikonografije, ki bi bil ta inštrument upodobljen. Grem pa za dvoglavo ljudnjo, Dumble Head Ljud, bi rekel, ne pa bližko, pri kateri pač so ohranili ta zlomen vrat, ki značina za nesančo ljudnjo, potem pa so še eno glavo zvijaki, zvijačnico za oglaševanje strun, potekli v zdravino, zato da so pač basovske strune lahko dobile dovolj prostora za zvenenje. Kaj bomo slišali? Torej se nekrat bom preliminer in pa sarabando, dve izklade na njimnih avtorjev, takrat je pač bilo ogromno prekoti literature za lutnjo, tudi na nizozemskem recimo so nekateri lutnisti delovali, kot je recimo Johan van der Hove, vendar tega bomo predstavili v četrtek, ko bomo z ansamblom igrali prav nizozemsko glasbo, poleg glasbe, ki značina za naš prostor. In z drugo lutnjo, ne? In z drugo lutnjo, ja, z nesančo lutnjo in pa z brožno hektaro. Torej, anonimih avtorjev, preliminer in pa sreba. Hvala lepa, Moris.
Brani knjig in gledanje slik je podobno, brez dvoma, brez oplevanja, z gotovostjo moramo občutovati to, kar je lepo. Tudi to je Van Gogova misel. Mislim, da bi se strinjal, da je tudi o zanimivih stvareh treba govoriti in mislim, da nas čaka zdaj prav to. Your Excellency, in Ksenja Horvat, novinarka Radio Televizije Slovenije, za gotovo jo poznate, lepo prosim, beseda je vajna. Večer, lepo pozdravljeni. Z gospodom Mene Poslanikom bova govorila angliško, ampak bova ravno tako se potrudila in bova nekaj besed prevedla sveda tudi v slovenščino za vse tiste, ki morda ne boste ujeli čisto vseh pomenov v angliščini. I was just saying that you will speak in English, but some Slovenian as well. But let's first clear something out, Marko. Can I call you Marko, actually? Do I have to call you your highness or something like that? It's a little bit too much. Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, coming from the monarchy, you know, you use all sorts of expressions. But basically, it was really weird that you understood a lot what the ladies here were saying, and also, what I find really uh, interesting, no one coming from Netherlands, Germany or English can pronounce my name properly. You did. <laughs> yeah. I know so many Xenias because I have been living in Belgrade for thirty three yes I'm being a diplomat for Belgrade, but it's thirty seven people. And yes I'm the lot mlad. But I, um, so I know Xenia, so I'm, uh, and many, so I'm, I'm, I've been back um, later, uh, when the war started in 91. And uh, I was then uh, for a couple of months in Zagreb. And later on I worked for uh, three years in Sarajevo. So I know a little bit of the region. And I know a little bit of the feelings. Torej, gospod ti povedal, ne, da se je potem po Beogradu še vrnil v Zagreb in na to, ko se je počela vojna, je tudi tri leta služboval v Sarajevo. Ampak naj dodam, da poleg tega ste bili seveda tudi v Parizu, bili ste v Kabulu, bili ste v Istanbulu. You went basically all over the place. But first, let me ask you about, what is the official title again, because we don't have that in Slovenia, Grand Master of the Royal Household of His Majesty, the King and later the Queen. Torej, veliki naslov, ki ga je tudi gospod imel, pa je veliki mojster kraljevskega gospodinstva, ali kako bi temu rekli, torej dvora, njegove, torej kraljice, najprej kralja in na to nizozemske kraljice. What did you have to do? Leading a household means leading a group, the house of the queen and then later of the king, means leading a house of 350 advisors, workers, helpers, drivers, etc. Advising the queen and later on the king. You have been there in 2013 when the Queen abdicated, like her mother did and her grandmother before. Was that a big thing in the uh, Netherlands? Torej, gospod je seveda upravljal svojo funkcijo velikega mojstra, prav takrat, ko je kraljica abdicirala, tako kot pred njo njena mama. Tam, this is like a normal royal family, I believe. I mean, you know, they move, they move away when, when there is time, unlike some other royal families in Europe. So, um, yeah, my question is, was that really big event for the Netherlands? Je bil to velik dogodek, ta abdikacija? Of course it is a big event, because the king or the queen symbolizes uh, uh, the head of state and the identity of the Netherlands, of Dutch people. And, and, and the queen is sort of mother of the nation, so when she leaves, everybody will think, my God, what will happen? The sun will come. Will he be as loved as her mother? 
tudi ta poredik matere po osebje kraljice. Vsi se potem sprašujejo, ko kraljica odide, o, kaj bo pa jutri, bo sonce vše šlo. So da sam detka malo. So the sun came and it was a big success <laughs> because the mother, the queen, did a fantastic job. But also the crown prince was very well prepared for his job. But for you personally, as a Vasusebno, it was a stressful period as well. It was because it, everything changed for you as well. You had to change the, your job and everything. How do you remember that personally? Well, it, it, it didn't change that much because I had been working with the king and the crown prince for many years to prepare for that moment. So I knew them both. And since I am their right hand advisor, the three of us could very well prepare, so I knew what would be coming and what we could expect. Torej bilo je veliko sodelovanje, ker je z prestolnim naslednikom in kraljico, njenim soprogom sodeloval že kar nekaj časa in vsi so vedeli, kaj jih potem čaka. Well, can you tell me a little bit about um, Dutch um, royalty? Um, this is one of the important uh, royal families in um, in Europe, but unlike some other, again, I have to repeat uh, myself, it's modern. It's modern royal household, isn't it? Is this how it developed because of the, I don't know, Protestant ethics of, um, of Dutch people? They didn't want the extravagance of, you know, the British neighbors, for instance, is this it? Torej, ali so, ali je tudi protestantska etika zaslužna za to, da da ima tam eno tako sodobno kraljevsko gospodinstvo, ki ni zelo podobno tistim čez čez torej preliv na britanskem britanskem na britanskem otoku. You you're very right, Senia. The uh, it is like in a country the people will get the leaders that they deserve. And Probably it is like this that uh, the royal family is very similar to the mentality of the people, which is not too exuberant, um, slightly modest, and trying to behave in a way that other people will understand, and not to create immediately a distance. Torej, sigurno je to tudi del mentalitete naroda. Ne? Na, voditelji naroda so vedno takšni, da so v bistvu odsev tudi ljudstva. Ups, torej tudi pred nas je vredno tako. Ali <laughs> 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 okay. um, In seveda tudi v njihovem primeru je tak, takšna zadeva. Um, I'm sorry, you... It is okay, no, I was thinking... <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so... Modern family, and there are no, for instance, like in Britain, you always had discussions about is monarchy really something we need? Is this modern enough for this time? Um, the rest of the Europe, not the whole Europe, uh, favors a republic, for instance. Is this debate in other words? Of instance? course, there is debate because we are human, so there's always debate. <laughs> And, and, and can I just, because this was the question that you wanted to ask me, <laughs> um, um, if you live in a monarchy, a question, <laughs> comparing to the Republic, do you have that. different attitudes with the state? And that was exactly, no, this is the point. Um, we are uh, um, individualistic, um, we are critical, and of course there is debate. And probably that helps also the king and queen. It wouldn't be nice if there is only just people saying, oh, this is, they are there because God sent them there. That doesn't happen. And there is debate. And that's why they are also tested to adapt themselves also to a new situation. Torej, ste razumeli, seveda je tudi tam, je vedno debata o tem, ali, torej, ali je kraljevska družina dovolj, torej, prenobljena, ali dovolj sledi modobni, modernim trendom. Sprašujo se tudi tam monarhija ali republika, to je verjetno nekaj taka rdeča nit, pa tako pri vas je. Ma, mo, morda samo še to, ne, ta 
materinski lik oziroma učitevski lik, mother figure or father figure of each king or queen, whatever, um, is the attitude towards you know king or queen so totally different from the attitude we have towards president or prime minister, for instance? How does that feel? Because you lived all over Europe and you know in Austria they have president. No? Yeah, I mean they are elected um, and people can vote for them, and a king is there because they inherited. It is well, you know, we live with this and we are happy with this because we do not have a discussion who will be the next head of state. So that in a way it is easy, but yet again, of course, there is criticism, but I think this is very healthy and it keeps people on their on their toes. No, ena od prednosti, kot pravi gospod veleposlanik, ki sedel tudi ta, da se ni treba torej vsakih štiri ali pa pet let spraševati, torej do bonov predsednik, katere so njegove prednosti, živijo s tem, kar imajo, to ne pomeni, je še enkrat povdarjo, da ni kritika, seveda je kritika. It was really interesting for me, seveda veste, ne, Holandija, Nizozemska, to je razlika, ampak zdaj v zadnjem času se je pravzaprav prav poleti Nizozemska vlada odločila, da bodo zdaj striktno uporabljali izraz Nizozemska, torej da bodo naredili ta rebranding, kot se reče v lepej slovenščini, ne. Torej, what is the purpose of this Netherland and Holland rebranding? So, from now on, government prefers Netherlands and not Holland any longer. What is the main reason for that? Okay. Probably it's a very simple answer. Holland is just the western part and the Netherlands is also including other provinces. And there is always a debate, it is a little bit like in this country, where you have also eastern and a western part. Mm -hmm. And there are always feelings. Torej tudi v Sloveniji imamo vzhodni in zahodni del in vedno so, to je vedno povezano s nekimi občutji. Tudi tam seveda Holand je samo ena pokrajina na zahodu, nizozemska je celotna država. But isn't there any also historic reasons for that? Like some old attitudes that maybe want to be changed, that you now prefer to be strictly called Netherlands and not Holland any longer? Well, I, I think we will use those terminology uh, and uh, it's not so strict. And uh, we probably have the image that we are very principled and I doubt it very much. Uh, so we use it. Uh, I personally do not believe in branding. Um, and I don't think that we really give a lot of effort in saying this is how we should be understood. Okay. Gospod Pele, poslani pravi, seveda, da on ni zelo čvrsto prepričan v to označevanje. Pravi, da ne verjame povsem, da bo zdaj to res samo Holandija, samo Nizozemska, ampak da bo seveda tudi stari izraz še obstal. Ok. You have only just arrived to Slovenia, really. So, could you share with us first impressions? What were the first things you noticed in Slovenia that you were maybe a little bit surprised when you saw them? Pleasantly, unpleasantly surprised? You can tell us all because we are all... We like criticism, like, you know, like you, that's how it goes. Torej, te prvi vtisi, ne, ko je prišel v Slovenijo še le dober mesec, dva meseca je gospod tukaj, ne, prosi, da sem ga še lahko povedi negativno in pozitivno vtisa, ne? Um, I knew the region a little bit and, um, and that is helpful but it is also not helpful because always you think back how it was 33 years ago <laughs> and sometimes I don't like it that I think oh this has changed I remember how it was Ljubljana so many years ago Torej, gospod se seveda vedno spomni, kako je bilo pred 33 letih, ko je bil recimo v Belu, pa je moral tudi priti v Ljubljano in to je lahko tudi nekoliko nadležno, pravi. Ja, ker bi svež pogled bi bil tudi pred, tako pa je vedno to breme preteklosti. But I've seen how it changed in the past 30 years. Ampak seveda se je spremenilo v zadnjih tudi. And I have noticed, probably more than before, that there is a similarity between our two peoples. Verjetno bolj kot prej je opazil, da so podobnosti med našima dvema narodoma. Well, of course, now I am generalizing, but maybe it helps. But my idea is that we are both critical, we are both individualistic, 
and we both, being a Catholic country, Slovenia, we are both Calvinistic. We both, we are neighboring a big country um, and we want to stand out and we want to be active, we want to be seen active. <laughs> now this is something that I sense very much here and this is also why it is nice to work together with the country. With, this is my job, to also think how we can cooperate in the European Union. Torej Marsi kaj nas povezuje, ne? tudi mi imamo tistega velikega soseda in prizadevam in si smo ambiciozni, želimo ga dohiteti, prihiteti in tudi zato pravi gospod, da imamo seveda priložnosti, številne priložnosti, da sodelujemo in delamo skupaj. Um, you mentioned we have in your case that's pretty simple, the big neighbor. Yeah. In our case, who did you have in mind? <laughs> <laughs> But like we have, I mean, we are living in the armpit of France and Germany. We had a big friend in, in the UK, they are leaving, so also we have our environment. Okay, I had in mind that you basically uh, have Germans as your big neighbor, sure. but of course, yeah. France. Yeah. Yeah. What about Slovenia? Uh, which one is the big neighbor that you think we understand as a big neighbor? First of all, I mean the, uh, uh, the southern part. I mean, you used to belong to a, a, a bigger nation. And then, of course, you have the northern part, uh, Austria. Then you have Italy. So, I mean, uh, this is quite some history there. Yeah, and quite a lot of politics involved, isn't it? Yeah, veliko politike. Okay, you've mentioned England, Great Britain, United Kingdom leaving. So, what does that mean for Netherlands now? The sort of the strategic, you know, uh, balance is changing. I'm getting more and more influence, and your word, uh, the Dutch word, is now going to have more, even more influence. Torej, glede na to, da odhajajo Britanci, ne, ali se bo zdaj to ravnovesje, to strateško ravnovesje prevesilo predvsej uprit uh, nizozemske, glede na to, da imajo takšno strateško lego? I could expect that this would be a very political talk. Xenia, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of course, we are very hard hit because uh, we are a huge trading partner of the UK, you can imagine. We are neighboring and we have a lot of export. Um, but we also miss a very pragmatic partner. Torej pomembno je to seveda zanje njihov velik in zelo pomembni trgovinski partner odhaja, ne? In to je seveda tudi za nizozemsko posebna oba situacija. So we expect a lot to change also with the customs, with trade, with regulations, uh, but also as a close partner in European future politics. This is what we expect that will change for us. In torej ne samo carine, dajatve in tako naprej, ne, tudi seveda se bo spremenil položaj v tej, uh, uh, tej evropski igri. To seveda gospod pričakuje. Ja, ok, but I have to insist on that. How it is going to change? Kako se bo vaš položaj torej spremenil? Um, if for a long time we had this, you know, Britain, Germany, France, the important countries who were actually taking this European train forward. How do you think this is going to change now? Well, it won't be easier, let's face it. And, uh, and how it will change, I mean, uh, listen, I don't know. Uh, uh, but uh, you have to, as politicians, they have to find new partners and have to find a, let's say, a common new goal. That is not easy. Torej, skupni nov cilj je treba poiskati in to seveda ni enostavno. But Tina, that's not an answer, eh? is it? Um, no, no. I, have, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to be too persistent because I'm, I'm just trying to ask you very basically simple questions that actually no one has the answers. No. 
but I would like um, to hear how you think about it, obviously. So, um, I'm a normal human being also who doesn't know all the answers, <laughs> yeah. fortunately. Absolutely. But tell, tell us then, what is the, let's say, official Dutch line on, on the new uh, sort of environment that is cre being created in European Union? So, uh, what are your, um, what do you want to change within your European Union? What are going to be your priorities? Um, who are you going to follow? I mean, who do you think you should now follow? Like, if we are going to have France on one hand, Germany on one hand, new divisions will be there. Being a very pragmatic nation, I think we will play it topic by topic. So when you talk about money, the budget for the EU, you will find your own group. Mm -hmm. When you talk about climate, you will find another group. And that will change. And it will not be so easy just to always keep all the different players, the 27, all together marching in the same direction. Господь Велик, послание прави се веде да се бодо одлочени од тематика до тематика и бодо искали зависни штатура и по тисти тематика, ки се им соротне се веде во тоа понавади кар тешко најти не консенс меѓу седми и двадесети ми членица ми Европска унија. If you say topics by topics, if you think about Slovenia. Why do you see we are sharing this common common ground? Where where do we have common goals? Where could we cooperate more? Where could we support each other more? So, if you have Slovenia and Nizozemska, there will be a lot of cooperation in our country, and that's a good thing. I think definitely when we think about how the future of Europe should be shaped, this is one thing. Because you both, we are both pragmatic, so we should not make it too big. We should, we should see that Europe should be big in the big things and should not mingle too much in the smaller details. That's one thing. The other thing is climate. I mean, you are very much in favor of sustainable growth, like we. You are very big in circular economy, like us. And then there is the last very important topic, which has a little bit to do with this Calvinist attitude and that is the rule of law, because also you value the rule of law very much, because of history, but also because of mentality. Okay. Ha, the first thing, ha, the first thing was to say that we are going to be able to take the European Union, which is not too big, but also it has to be spada in the same way as the typical European Union, and it is not too big in the same way. Torej prva zadeva. Druga zadeva, ki jo delimo, so je okoljska naravnanost. V volji si želimo čisto, boljšo Evropo in smo zato pripravljeni mar se kaj narediti. In tretja zadeva je spet povezana s tistim kalvinističnim momentom. What was the kalvinistic moment? The rule of law. Yeah. Ha, this is why I didn't remember it, because I was surprised you mentioned this for Slovenia. Listen to your politicians, please. Because we complain all the time there's no rule of law in this country. Nobody's respecting the rule of law. Yeah, but we believe in rule of law. We just don't respect it. No, I'm sorry. But ecology. Um, in the area of ecology, we definitely are a big admirer of what Netherlands is doing at the moment because Netherlands can do such things like they just decide they are going to limit uh, their uh, uh, the speed limit from 120 to 100 at the most during daytime, and it's true with March 220. In Slovenia, such debate would take about three years, and in the end, we would have a referendum and nothing would come out of it. But so, why can you do such an important thing relatively quickly without big hassle? Is your awareness of ecological problems so much more developed than in our case? Torej, zakaj oni to zmorajo se odločiti za pomembne stvari tako usmerjeno in hitro? I don't know whether we are more courageous, but I think that the government uh, is a different government uh, uh, in, in the sense that this government is just uh, in place one year has to find its strength in our country this 
line of thinking is already there for about seven years. So we have a very dedicated prime minister. He knows where he has support and he will say, listen, although this is not my choice, I'm going to 100, but we save jobs for people who would otherwise uh, uh, lose their jobs. Nova vlada je seveda na vlasti še le kako leto, se pozicionira, hkrati pa je dovolj pragmatična, da vidi, kje ima podporo in kje lahko še predobiva podporo in lahko se torej odloči, da bo teh šla na 100 km, tudi, ker to prinaša nova izdelovna mesta. How does it bring with the new working places? Well, it is very much that we think that uh, if you will, uh, if you can't stop uh, the uh, pollution, we cannot build because there are all kinds of regulations that suddenly all kinds of construction uh, projects should be stopped. And we have to find ways where you can say if we stop uh, driving so fast, we can save that percentage of, uh, of pollution. Imajo odločitev, ne, če torej prenehajo vozi tako hitro, bo raven o nesnaženosti bistveno zmanjšana. Ok, maybe you could suggest this to our politicians when you will have those meetings. And I bet that everyone here supports this, isn't it? I'm sure that we are all up for that. Ok, um, it's not only ecology, I mean also the latest facts and figures uh, done by um, the World Economic Forum for the year 2000 are actually really impressive. Netherlands has been crowned the most competitive economy in Europe and the force on the world level. Now, when, when I say competitive, it's of course not, yeah, but who cares about facts and figures? The important thing is that uh, uh, the Holland Dutch people actually live in um, macroeconomic stability, financial stability, they don't work, they don't live in crisis from one crisis to another. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about this wonder. How did you do that? Of course it doesn't come overnight, but it is something that has been built before. But what are the basic mechanisms that your country has been using to, to come to such a nice position as you have? Ste razumeli svetovna gospodarska na prvo mesto v Evropi, in zdaj ne glede na to, da je to samo prvo mesto, to ni tako pomembno, ljudje živijo lepo, stabilno življenje in jih ne nehno ne strašijo, ne vem, da bomo zdaj padli iz ene krize v drugo krizo. Stabilnost je lepa stvar, ne se strenjamo. This is an extremely difficult question. But it boils down to, also to my taste, to a mentality issue. Uh, because I think that we have been used over the ages to be in dialogue with each other from different sides, from employers, employees, church, uh, all kinds of people who are involved. Um, we did so by uh, acclaiming uh, uh, the sea, uh, by uh, fighting uh, uh, and, and nature and by building new uh, territory by the polders yeah. and this poldering means, which is also a verb in my country means that we want to sit together we want to share it's exactly how we are sitting I can easily read what you're doing <laughs> I need to come. make contact with you <laughs> and then but this is probably the mentality how can we do business how can information how can we just be uh, let's say easy in contact with each other how can I learn from you I don't want to make myself bigger so there is a distance but I just want to get to know you and probably this is an element of this mentality uh, this is a long thing to translate yeah but it's very interesting so I'll try hard to be uh, exact Torej, gospod pravi, da to je seveda stvar tudi mentalitete, da oni imajo tradicijo od tega, da se vsedejo delodajalci, zaposleni, industrijalci, cerkev je omenil, ne, na to je dobro ste opozorili, ne, to, dobro, da bomo se spuščali v slovenske razmere. I'm sorry, I'm not commenting something that would make you, you know, that you'd have reason to make you, but the lady here mentioned church, so, it's good that you can all talk together and 
try to achieve. We try to. You try to. We okay. try to. Yeah. We not always succeed. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> In potem seveda je tu tudi ta nizozemska tradicija pridobivanja torej zemlje iz morja. Kako se ti mora eno pravilno gospodnita, lahko mi pomagate? Izsuševanje. Izsuševanje, ne? Izsuševanje je spravo the best expression. Pojde. 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 A tudi v Slovenščini to pravi. Tako, tako. Pojde, slovenska beseda ni izrejšnjo. Ne, torej pridobivanje, težko delo, naporno delo, pridobivanje zemlje in rdovitih površin iz morja. Ok, this is interesting, but not something we could follow entirely, but the first bit, absolutely, because I think Slovenians like that. So let's learn from, let's learn from Netherlands, this is an interesting uh, subject. Um, what a positive character, huh? <laughs> I, love, I mean, I like, I like what you were saying earlier that, um, yeah, let's find how we can all live better. We it's not a wonder, you know. Yeah. It's just human behavior. Yeah. Um, it's just making yourself a little bit more modest. Mm -hmm. And not saying, look who I am. But say, hey. <laughs> but we are. Um, okay. You said, can I, can I call you Mark? I said, of course, can you call me Mark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? yeah. No, I, I think that this is really something one could admire because we are a post transitional country and we are used to different uh, political culture, unfortunately. I'm not saying it's all bad, I would never want to do that. But of course, we have a lot to learn from great democracies. This is absolutely the fact. Talking to each other, you know, having this common goal mentality would be really nice. Um, when I was thinking about the, you know, like the common historic ties we have, um, Dutch and Slovenian people, um, I had a lot of problems. I am sure that you know people who are very much involved in the subject know a lot about that. Tori usik, poznate te, tori poznate tudi stare zgodovinske lezi med nizozemci in slovenci. But I could only think about our famous painter Jama, who actually married the Dutch painter and he painted a lot of um, 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 Dutch villages, lovely little villages and so. Um, can you think about something else? Because before Slovenia got independent, we are of course part of Yugoslavia and all the countries would only deal with Belgrade, not directly with Ljubljana. So do we have a common history that reaches further in, uh, back than only 30 years? Can you think of something interesting? Maybe Anita can help us. If Anita doesn't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many other experts, no, but I mean, uh, sometimes we can, uh, it's, it's nice to have a history, but sometimes also the history can weigh uh, very heavily on us, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, and sometimes it is not easy to live with history, as we all understand. So sometimes it's better if there are no historic things because they could also be negative. Let's, sure. let's put it this way. Okay, but Matija Yama is a good example of Dutch and Slovenian, let's say, historic ties, basically. Yeah? Okay, um, what are other areas that are important in our cultural uh, cooperation? For instance, I know that universities work together a lot. And again, you know, mentioning Anita, Filosofska Faculteta, our humanities uh, faculty, and especially the uh, department for Neanderthalistica is doing really a lot in this in this matter. <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Xenia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, there is also, I mean, not only from universities, this is culture, but also in the economy, in design, in e-mobility, electric driving, for instance. Uh, uh, so there is a lot that we have in common. There are so many uh, uh, um, ways in which we already cooperate. Um, but 
also in language, and I'm just uh, now uh, looking at you, Anita, because we celebrate that we have 30 years of Dutch language in this country, and we decided that we will celebrate this next year with a nice symposium. We do hope that we will be in contact so that more people will understand that we are proud of our language, and that I know that you are very proud of your language. Um, and there are several writers here who have been translated. So this is why and how we can cooperate. It is culture, it is well, music maybe, well, thank you very much, the lute was beautiful. <laughs> um, uh, and we have, uh, well, we have some composers, but probably uh, the painters are the best known. And I just, because I was sitting there, so I could all the time look at this, and this is such a nice, and, and since I'm also trying to paint myself, and I'm just, this weekend I was paying, uh, painting also the air, and I'm just intrigued just to see this piece of light here. And this is, if you look and concentrate on that light, this is really why we have masters, you know, in, in painting. And that's probably where we, uh, and, and that's why I'm so extremely happy that we uh, have this, uh, this week of Dutch culture. Because this is a nice start, at least for me. Because we have so many contacts already. I mean, between universities, between um, uh, tourists, between uh, businessmen. So luckily, a lot is happening without even the embassy knowing. Can you imagine? <laughs> a lot is happening without even I know. But I'm very fortunate that a lot is happening just by itself. Torej, gospod veliposlanik pravi, da toliko povezav obstaja, seveda jezik je ena, ampak tudi ekonomija, poslovne povezave, dizajn, nekaj glasbe in seveda umetnost. Zdaj nam je izdal, da tudi sam nekoliko poskuša slikati. I didn't know you were... Do you call yourself pen? Zdaj no dobro slikati. Aha, ok. Torej, ok, I can imagine what you will do. After you definitely <laughs> retire, yes. <laughs> in 2013, yes, yeah. of course. Um, in the same way, 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 with us, uh, and I will meet them in a couple of weeks because I said we would, I'd like to invite those who have been registered. I would like to invite them to a end of the year party, yeah. and everybody is welcome. Even Children, if you're no, not Dutch. Not, no. <laughs> of course, you have to be Dutch. Uh, no, we, we we discriminate. No, no, no. It's, no, but I mean this is very just, much for us. You yeah. said a couple of thousand. Yeah. Okay. All over. Okay. This is quite a lot, no? I, I will just test Petra, am I right or not? Yeah, well, mas or me no. Približno, ne? Ok, se vedi, nimajo točnega podatka, verjetno, ker se ljudem, se vedi, v Evropski uniji ni treba nujno registrirati, kar pomeni, da lahko nekaj časa ali pa, ne vem, vedno živijo tu, ne, da se vedno prijavijo, verjetno, ne? Pa sem prav to razumela. Ampak bo gospod zdaj organiziral novoletni sprejem, kamor bo povabil te ljudi, da se družijo, spoznajo in verjetno organizirajo kaj skupaj. Vem, da je tudi v nizozemskem obstaja zelo aktivno slovensko društvo, ki se tam združuje, povezuje, ima folkloro, razne dogodke in tako naprej. There are also Slovenians in Holland, in Netherlands, who are very active and they... Ha, ok. I've um, almost passed my exam. <laughs> Still some questions to go. Um, there, yeah, there is one, um, well, with, which is a difficult question, but I'm, I'm going to try and turn it, um, sort of ask, so it would have a positive note. 
our part of the world, our part of Europe, of course, is facing this question that we don't have a good answer, how to help, how to support, what to think about migrants and refugees who are coming mainly through our country to the more developed Western countries. But I have seen some nice things that are happening in Netherlands in this case. For instance, in a couple of the cities you reorganize yourself and are actually training some refugees as a bus drivers. So can you tell us a little bit of the Netherlands attitude towards newcomers and uh, your approach to make themselves sort of settle down or otherwise? We have been used to migrants for many years now. About 60 years ago, we asked people from Turkey and Morocco to come and work with us. Thousands of them. Because we needed them. It was not always easy to integrate them. And, uh, and during those 40-50 years, also the climate changed. Not always for the better, but there is discussion in the country. But fortunately, the general tenure is that people are welcoming, they want them to feel welcome, and also to give them a purpose in life. Uh, Torej že je približno 70 let, ko je šlo za veliko presedencev iz Maroka in iz Turčije. Ni bilo vedno enostavno seveda, ampak uh, nizozemci so jih sprejeli, ker so tudi potrebovali delovno silo seveda. In uh, je debata o tem, torej tudi o tem, kako jim pomagati in kako jim na, najti torej, smisel njihovega obstoja na, na nizozemskem. But then you also have great tradition, because uh, after the Spanish Inquisition you accepted loads and loads of Jewish refugees who actually became so famous as Spinoza, Big Spinoza for instance, and probably many others that I can't think of right now. Um, okay, I think that we said it's going to be half an hour now, it's already almost an hour, so... It's <laughs> too much. <laughs> I would like to ask you though one more thing you can answer very br briefly. Every ambassador who comes to a foreign country probably sets himself a goal in coordination with government of course, but what are my priorities? What I would like to achieve in our relations, you know, Dutch Slovenian relations. Do you, do you have something, let's say, concrete in mind, some goals that you want to achieve in next Years, for instance. Indeed, it is language. This is very concrete. It is very much raising awareness because uh, many people in my country do not know where Slovenia is um, and vice versa. Uh, so that is always what you try to do. Um, but since I'm getting uh, much older now, I always uh, also am slightly more modest in setting the goals. At least, uh, it is, I'd like to be very concrete. This is language, it is how can we cooperate with rule of law? How can we be of help in the EU presidency of Slovenia in 21? Now these are goals, and I'd like just to do this before I retire. Okay. <laughs> Um, I didn't say the, the word older, just more experienced. You say older. I don't mind. Torej, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me. Um, I hope I didn't tire you out with some boring questions. No, Sylvia, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> you. No, I appreciate it very much. And one of the things is why I don't mind if I will be called that I'm older. 
because this is, I'm very proud to, at, at least to live, uh, to get older, mm -hmm. because you learn much more. And I remember quite well how I was when I was young. I, <laughs> I couldn't do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And this is what you gradually, you try to understand better. And uh, that's also what makes my uh, life, uh, I think, uh, nice and interesting. Thank you very much for giving the time and uh, taking time just to understand the Netherlands. I like to be in contact with you because uh, I think that we can also, through the media, we can explain what we are doing. But it's been a, a nice treat to be interviewed by you. Thank you very much, Senja. <laughs> Uh, Your Excellency, since you have passed the exam, we have a little gift for you. Another one, not just the week of Netherlands, Dutch week. Um, yeah, this is I will tell you. Yeah, what is going on? Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. And yeah. since you are in the library, you can receive it. This open. The book has a title Slovenia in Seven Days. Although it's a small country, but I think in months, in one month or two months, you would have a lot to see and a lot to travel about uh, Slovenia and around. So it's a rich country. Seven days will not be easy. Thank you, two and a half years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Znate, kole, gospod uh, veleposlanik je omenjal jezik in simpozi uh, in kar nekaj krat se je tudi Ksenija obrnila kaniti. Uh, zakaj je omenjam? Zato, ker je prebajalka Tuna Telehna, nizozemskega pesnika in pisatelja, ki je rekel, da za nobeno v pesmi ne ve, o čem, o čem bo govorila. Za nobeno naslednjo pesem. Mi pa vemo, da bo ta teden prinesel veliko lepega. Kaj točno od dokumentarnih filmov o Velikani kot sta Rembrandt in Van Gogh, do potopisnih predavanj o uh, nizozemski in izkušnjah, res tistih, ki so tam stali doživljeni in tako naprej, do uh, razstav, skratka, ogromno vsega že na začetku sem rekla, imate priložnosti izbirati in vse najdete v knjižicah, ki so vas počakale na uh, stolih. Zdaj se pa samo še zahvalim za vašo uh, budno prisotnost in vas prosim, da ne odirite še takoj. Nam rečene zadej so nam iz gostinstva per pripravili še nekaj kulinaričnih užitkov in pa seveda druženja, tako ali drugače. Hvala lepa. Uh, Van Gogh je rekel, da pogosto razmišlja o tem, da je noč veliko bolj živa in brvita kot dan, lahko je začeljamo prav zdaj to brvitost. Hvala lepa in lahko noč.